Hello everyone. In today's video, we will be discussing an actual interview question related to arrays. Suppose you are given an array of integers and you need to find out if a pair exists in the array such that their sum equals to a given number. First and foremost, as a candidate, you need to make sure that you have understood the question properly. The way you can ensure it is by asking the same question back to the interviewer in your own words. And then you should ask the interviewer that is it the actual question that you are asking me. The next thing that you need to do is to come up with a sample problem. So pick up the marker and draw on whiteboard. Make an array of integers and start brainstorming that how you can solve the given question. At this time, many times candidates think that if my solution is not optimal, then why should I bother telling it to the interviewer? Right? Wrong. The first thing that you should do as a candidate is to come up with a solution, whether it's optimal or not. The very fact that you come up with a solution gives you a lot of points and with like we can always improve the solution later on. The first solution that comes to mind is to write nested for loops. We can write one for loop inside another for loop and check if the sum of the two numbers is equal to the expected sum. If such a pair exists, we can return true. Otherwise, at the end of the two for loops, we can assume that such a pair does not exist and we can return false. Here is the pseudocode of the solution that I just mentioned. Now I will be posting the actual code in the video description itself. In the actual interview, you might not have to write that code ever on the whiteboard. In fact, you should not be writing any code on the whiteboard unless and until interviewer likes your solution and asks you to code it. Next thing that the interview will ask you is the runtime complexity of this pseudocode. If you were to write this program on actual code, like what will be the runtime complexity? Well, in our case, there are two nested for loops, each going like one from zero to n and the other one from one to n. So the algorithmic complexity here will be O of n square. At this point, the interviewer might ask you that how we can do better than O of n square. Now you should start thinking of a better solution, a more optimal solution. The next solution that comes to mind is using a hash set. I have written the pseudocode right here. What we are doing is we are looping through the array and at each and every point, what we are doing is we are checking if the expected sum minus the array element exists in the hash set or not. If it does not exist, we add the arrays element to the hash set. And at the end of the for loop, if we are never ever like we never found such a number, such a pair, then we can return false. Now the interviewer will ask you, what's the runtime complexity of this solution? Since it's a one single for loop and you are using the power of a hash set where the lookup is O of one, the algorithmic complexity of this whole solution is O of n. At this point, the interviewer might like your solution and he or she may ask you to code it on the whiteboard. So what do you do? You jump on the whiteboard and start coding? Wrong. Before you jump on to coding on the whiteboard, you will have to go through the edge cases. You have to think through that what all inputs can fail your algorithm. So in our example, it could be, for example, what if the array does not have any elements? What if the array has only one single element? What if there are only two elements? What if there are certain negative numbers? So you need to think through all those edge cases and list them down on the whiteboard itself before you start writing any code. So now at this point, the interviewer likes your algorithm and you have listed down all the edge cases. Now you can start writing the actual code on the whiteboard. In the interest of time, I wrote down the code myself here on the whiteboard and you will be getting a link to the actual code so you can download it and run it in Visual Studio. 
Another small thing that might be of concern is the language that in which you are coding. So you need to tell the interviewer that um, whatever language you are comfortable with, that this is my language of choice. In my case, I'm very much comfortable with C sharp. So I went with that language. You need to tell that to the interviewer beforehand. Once you have written the code completely on the whiteboard, the next important step is to test the code. You need to make sure that it's doing what you intend it to do. If you have followed all these steps, then I would say that you have successfully answered the interview question. If you like the video, please subscribe to my YouTube channel, Coach for Dev. In my future videos, I'll be adding more such interview questions and how to answer them in an actual interview setting. So until then, see you guys again and happy coding.